once again hi everyone uh, this is the first tutorial of uh, 2016 I wish you the very best luck in the new year and happy new year um, I thought that in this tutorial I would like to uh, instead of going through uh, teaching you some of the techniques in CSS and JavaScript uh, I want to show you how you can enhance and optimize your work uh, or web development uh, process so that you basically make your um, time sort of optimized for the faster development. Uh, all right, uh, I would like to ask you again to uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so that I can create these tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to uh, create a task uh, to automate the browser refresh. When you do coding, uh, it happens a lot of time that you save uh, and you have to go back to the browser, you know, refresh. So what we're going to do is that we're going to automate this process. So let's get started. We're going to use a build tool called Gulp. You need to have Node.js installed. So you, if you don't know already what Node.js is, please go to this address and you know, take a look at the documentation and uh, you know, download it. So when you download it and install it. Uh, you basically have Node.js executable, uh, which is Node, and also NPM, which is the Node package manager, in order to download the modules and dependencies for, for a specific project. Uh, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually install the Gulp using NPM install Gulp. But OK, let's first create or initialize a project here. So I have created a uh, project called or directory called Gulp project and I've added an app folder so if I use my editor which is subline you can see that you know basically I have a uh, app folder here with the, my CSS images and JS I have created already an index.html for the sake of this tutorial I added something and uh, I've added a CSS file as well, which is uh, in the main.css in my CSS folder. So if I go back, I'm going to do npm init. And what it does is that it, it creates a, uh, it, it asks for a couple of things like the name of the project. I'm going to name it called project. It doesn't accept the capitalization. Then I'm going to enter, you know, the rest. And what it does is that it creates a package.json file. Uh, you can see here. And it includes a couple of things regarding our project, name, version, description, you know, author, uh, and whatnot. And also, uh, this is a file that I'm going to add uh, some of the dependencies I need for this project. So I'm going to do npm install, um, you know, gulp, first of all, which is the build tool that I'm going to use. And then I will pass the flag save dev. What it does is that it's going to go and install the gulp in this specific project and also it adds an entry to the package.json so that later on you know uh, and also of course it adds a node module directory if I go inside you can see that gulp is is, is there so here uh, I'm gonna add another module uh, which I need for the browser refresh uh, so if I do npm install the module is called browser sync I'm gonna use the save dev so after this gets installed, it adds the entry to the package.json, and then I basically need, if I want to, you know, uh, move this to another environment, I just need to pass this, you know, file, and then I do npm install. It goes through the package.json, see all the dependencies, and tries to install those dependencies on your new environment. I'm going to show you uh, what package.json will look like, you know, after this has been created. Uh, so the whole idea is that Gulp uh, needs a file called gulpfile.js that actually includes all the code, you know, uh, include all, includes all the code for the tasks that we want to automate. So in this case, I want to you know refresh the browser. So uh, just waiting a little bit for this to to get finished. Uh, it's going to be right now. Yeah, I clear the page in my terminal and if I take a look at the package the JSON here you can see that there is this entry called dev dependencies with the browser sync and gulp that I've already added so if I go back to my uh, editor I'm gonna create a new file called uh, let's just save it as gulp gulp file 
.js. Inside my gulp file, I'm going to use a little bit of a JavaScript programming, uh, well, no JS, so I'm going to create a variable and then I'm going to cre require the gulp that I installed. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to name the other one browser sync, the other one for the refreshing of the browser. So browser sync, and then I'm going to create a task. So gulp tasks are created like this. So gulp.task I'm going to create called browser sync and then I pass a function which actually uh, you know I will add the browser sync the module that I here in it passing an object and then give it a server as a key and then base uh, dir is gonna be my app right so what it does is actually that it adds a task. So in the terminal, if I type gulp uh, browser sync, it fires up uh, or it spins up a, a, a uh, server for me using browser sync. And uh, it will let the server to have the base directory of the app that, that we created. So let's just test it. Let's see what happens. So if I do gulp browser sync, you'll see that, you know, after a while, it creates this, you know, it creates a server on port 3000, and then, you know, you basically can see uh, the index.html file content. So what I'm going to do, I'll go back to, to my editor. What I want to do is that I want to actually watch all the files, index.html, all the files in my CSS folder, all the files in my JS folder, and in case of saving, I want it to refresh the browser. So I'm going to create another task in Gulp and call it, you know, watch actually. The second parameter, instead of a function, I'm going to pass, you know, the name of the task that I've already created. So the reason for this is that whenever I run the call, uh, the Gulp watch in the terminal in order to run all the things within this task, first, before this, I would like the browser sync task to get started. Otherwise, you know, I have to first go to the, uh, and run the browser sync to, fires up, uh, to fire up the browser and then call the watch function. So, all right. So then within this watch function, I would like to actually watch, which is like uh, the method or the function is called watch, called watch. What I want to watch, I want to watch the index.html. And then when it's changed, I want the browser sync to reload. Right. I'm going to use the same thing for, you know, CSS and all the CSS that are in my CSS folder with the wildcard star here, and then also whatever I have in my JS folder. Right. So what happens now? If we go ahead and instead of running Gulp browser sync, if I run Gulp watch, you'll see that. You know, it opens up the browser for me. First of all, it starts the browser sync, and then it starts the watch. Okay, let's see what happens. So I'm going to go to my CSS and main. I will change, um, you know, this to red. I'm not going to save it. So in the normal scenario, you change it, you go back to your browser, you refresh it, you know, and then you will see the effect. But now, if I just save this using Command S here you'll see that it turns to red without me going to the browser and refresh it. If I change this to white, it's going to be white. So this is the same for the index.html. So here we have finished our tasks. There you go. So I, I hope you enjoyed this process, uh, this, this, this tutorial. So in the next tutorial and the, the one after that, I'm going to give you more information regarding the task that you can use in order to automate uh, your, your workflow and enhance the time that you're using uh, for your web development. So please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Uh, I hope you like this tutorial and I'll see you next time. Thank you.